he the great divine being said did i not tell you that you would not certainly be able to bear with me patiently moses said if i question you about anything after this keep me in your company no more for in that case you shall have reached the extent of being excused by me i shall have no excuse to offer so both of them again set out till when they came upon the inhabitants of a town they asked them for food but they refused to entertain them as guests then they found therein a wall which was on the point of falling down and he the divine being repaired it moses said if you had wanted you could have charged for it the divine being thereupon said this is the parting of the ways between me and you now i shall tell you the significance of that with which you could not have patience as for the boat it belonged to certain poor people who worked on the river and in their rear there was a brutal king who seized every good boat by force so i chose to damage it and as for the boy his parents were believers and we feared that he should involve them in trouble through transgression and disbelief so we desired that their lord should give them in his place a child superior to him in virtue and purity and more regardful to attend to the right of relationships as for the wall it belonged to two orphan boys of the town and under this wall there was a treasure belonging to them and their father had been a righteous man so your lord desired that they should attain their age of full strength and then take out their treasure a mercy from your lord and i did not do it of my own accord whatever i did was the will of the lord this is the significance of that which you were not able to bear with patience and they ask you about Zul Karnain, Cyrus of Persia. Say, I will just recite to you some of his account. Verily, we granted him authority on the earth, and provided him with all sorts of means. Then it so happened that he launched out on a particular course, so that when he reached the land of the setting of the sun, he found it disappearing as if in a vast muddy pool of murky water, and close to it he found a certain people. We said, Zul Karnain, you may either punish them or treat them with kindness. He said, Well, as for him who transgresses and does wrong, we shall certainly punish him. Then will he be produced before his Lord who will inflict upon him a dreadful punishment. But as for him who submits and believes and acts righteously, there is for him a handsome reward with his Lord, and we shall speak to him easy words of our command. Then he launched out on another course, so that when he reached the land of the rising of the sun, he found it rising on a people for whom he had provided no shelter against it. That is how it was. As for him, we alone had full knowledge of all that he had with him. Then he launched out onto yet another course, so that when he reached a place between two barriers, he found in their vicinity a people who could hardly understand speech. They said, Zul Karnain, Gog and Magog are playing havoc in this country. Shall we pay you tribute on condition that you set up a barrier between us and them? He said, The power which my Lord has endowed me with about this is better than your tribute. You only help me with your resources and human endeavor of physical strength. I will raise a rampart between you and them. Then he said, Bring me ingots of iron so that when all was provided for and he had filled the space between the two barriers he said now blow with your bellows they blew till when he had made it red hot as fire he said 
bring me molten copper that I may pour it thereon. So there was built the rampart which they, Gog and Magog, could neither scale, nor they had the strength to cause a breach through it. He said thereupon, This rampart signifies a great mercy of my Lord. But when the promise of my Lord about the spread of the tentacles of Gog and Magog all over the world shall come to pass, he will raise it to the ground, crumbling it to pieces. And the promise of my Lord is certainly true. And we shall leave them, Gog and Magog, alone, at that time surging as waves in furious attacks, one over another. And the trumpet shall be blown. Then shall we gather them all together. And we shall, in a way, present hell on that day face to face to the disbelievers. Those of them whose eyes were under a cover not heeding my reminder, and they could not even afford to hear to the voice of truth. Do those disbelievers think, even then, that they can take my servants as patrons to my exclusion? Let them know surely we have prepared Jehenna for the disbelievers as an entertainment. Say, Shall we inform you of those whose deeds shall spell their utter loss? They are those whose efforts are all lost in pursuit of things relating to the life of this world. Yet they think they are doing works of good manufacturing. It is these who disbelieve in and deny the messages of Allah and the meeting with him. So their deeds have gone vain. And on the day of resurrection we shall assign them no weight. That is their recompense, Jehenna, because they disbelieved, and they looked down upon my signs and my messengers. Those who believe and do deeds of righteousness will have gardens of paradise for an entertainment and an abode, wherein they shall abide for ever, having no desire to be removed from there. Say, if every ocean became ink for recording the words and creation of my Lord, surely the oceans would be spent up before the words and creation of my Lord came to an end, even if we brought to add therewith as many more oceans. Say, I am but a human being like you. It has been revealed to me that your God is only one God. So let him who hopes to meet his Lord do deeds of righteousness, and let him associate no one in the worship of his Lord. Mariam Mary With the name of Allah, the Most Gracious, the Ever-Merciful, Kaf, Ha, Ya, Ein Sod. Allah is sufficient for all, and He is the true guide, bestower of mercy and security and blessings, the all knowing, the supermost, truthful. This is an account of the mercy of your Lord shown to His servant Zachariah, when He called upon His God, crying aloud in humble supplication. He said, praying, My Lord, now the very bones within me have waxed feeble, and the hair of my head are all gray and hoary. My Lord, never have I been hitherto deprived of a favorable response to my prayer to you. I fear for the unrighteousness of my kinsfolk after me, and my wife is barren. Grant me by your special grace a pious and righteous successor who may be an heir to me, and inherit the divine blessings promised to the house of Jacob, and make him, my Lord, well-pleasing to you. God accepted his prayer and said, Zachariah, we give you the glad tidings of the birth of a son named Yahya, John, who will live long. We have made none like him in your house before this. He, Zachariah, said, My Lord, how shall I beget a son when my wife is barren and I have already reached the extreme limit of old age? The Lord said, 
so shall it be. And the angel bearing the revelation said, Your Lord says it is easy for me, and behold, I have created you before this, whereas you too were nothing. He, Zachariah, said, My Lord, appoint for me a commandment. The Lord said, The commandment for you is that you shall not speak to people for three successive days and nights, being in sound health. Then he, Zachariah, went forth to his people from the sanctuary, and told them in a low voice and by signs, to glorify their Lord morning and evening. We said to John, Yahya, hold fast the divine book. And while he was yet a child, we gave him wisdom. And tender-heartedness and purity by our special grace, he was one who carefully guarded against evil. And he was dutiful towards his parents, and he was neither arrogant nor rebellious. Blessed was he the day he was born, and the day he died, and peace will be upon him the day he will be raised to life again. And give an account of Mary in this book, when she withdrew from her people to an eastern spacious place of the temple. Then she screened herself off from them. Then we sent to her our angel of revelation, and he presented himself to her in the form of a perfect and well-proportioned man. Mary said, I invoke the most gracious God to defend me from you. If you guard the least against evil, leave me alone. He said, I am but a messenger of your Lord. I give you glad tidings of a most pure son. She said, How can I bear a son while no man has married me and has yet touched me, nor have I been unchaste? The angel said, So the fact is just as you describe. Your Lord has said, It is easy for me. We shall do it so that we make him a sign and a source of blessing from us, for the people. It is a matter ordained. She, Mary, conceived him, and withdrew with him to a remote place. At the time of the delivery of the child, the throes of childbirth drove her to the trunk of the palm tree. She said, Oh, would that I had become unconscious before this, and had become a thing gone and forgotten. Then a voice called her from the side of the slope by her, saying, Do not grieve. Your Lord has placed a rivulet on the side of the slope by you. Shake the branch of the palm tree, drawing it toward you. It will cause fresh and ripe dates to fall upon you. Eat, therefore, and drink, and be happy. Then if you see any human being, tell him, I have vowed a fast to the gracious God, so I will not speak to any human being today. When Jesus grew up, she took him to her people, carrying him on a mount. They said, Mary, you have brought a strange thing. O oh, sister of Aaron, your father was not a bad man, nor was your mother unchaste. Thereupon she pointed to him. They said, How should we speak to one who was till recently a child in the cradle? It came to pass that the son of Mary said, I am indeed a servant of Allah. He has given me the book and made me a prophet. And he has made me blessed wherever I may be. And he has enjoined upon me prayer and almsgiving so long as I live. And he has made me dutiful to my mother. And he has not made me arrogant, graceless. And peace was upon me the day I was born, and peace will be upon me the day I die, and the day I shall be raised up to life again. Such was Jesus, son of Mary. This is a statement of true facts about him, concerning which they so deeply disagree. It does not behove the majesty of Allah to take to himself a son. Holy is he 
when he decrees a matter, he only commands it, be, and it comes to be. Jesus said, Surely Allah is my Lord and your Lord, so worship him alone. This is the exact right path. Yet the various sects were divided among themselves. Woe shall befall those who deny the meeting of the great day. How clear they will hear, and how well they will see on the day they come to us. But this day the unjust are steeped in manifest error. Warn them of the day of intense regret, when the matter is decided and it is all over and they are still steeped in ignorance and negligence, and they do not believe. It is we who will remain after the earth and all who are inhabiting it have perished. To us shall they all be returned. Give an account of Abraham in this book. Surely he was a very truthful man, a prophet. Behold, he said to his sire, My dear sire, why do you worship that which can neither hear, nor see, nor can be of any avail to you? My dear sire, indeed I have been given the sort of knowledge which has not been given to you. So follow me. I will guide you along the straight path. My dear sire, do not serve Satan. Surely Satan is disobedient to the most gracious God. My dear sire, if you went on serving Satan, I fear lest some punishment from the most gracious God should seize you so that you should become an associate of Satan. Thereupon Abraham's uncle replied, Do you dare to be averse to my gods, O Abraham? If you do not give up, I shall certainly cut off all relations with you. You had better leave me alone for a time. Abraham said, leaving him, Peace be upon you. I will ask protection for you from my Lord. He is indeed gracious to me. I shall keep away from you, and from that which you call upon besides Allah. I will pray to my Lord. I hope that in praying to my Lord I shall not be disappointed. So he, Abraham, kept away from them, and from that which they worshipped besides Allah. We bestowed on him Isaac and Jacob. We made each of them a prophet. And we bestowed our blessings upon them, and we granted them a sublime and lasting good name, and made the people remember and mention them. Give an account of Moses in this book. He was indeed a purified and chosen one, and he was a messenger, a prophet. And we called out to him from the blessed side of the Mount Sinai, and we made him draw near to us for close and special communion. And out of our mercy we bestowed upon him as his helper his brother Aaron, also a prophet. Give an account of Ismael in this book. He too was strictly true to his promise, and he was a messenger, a prophet. He enjoined his people to observe prayer and present alms. He was well pleasing to his Lord. And give an account of Idris, Enoch, in this book. He was a very truthful man, a prophet. And we raised him to an exalted position. It is these people on whom Allah did bestow his blessings. They were all prophets. They were of the posterity of Adam and of those whom we carried in the ark with Noah. Some of them were of the posterity of Abraham and Israel and of those whom we guided and chose. They would fall prostrating, glorifying God and weeping when the messages of the most gracious Lord were recited to them. But after them evil descendants came who neglected prayer and pursued their evil passions. They are doomed to meet perdition. Different, however, will be the case of those who turn to God in repentance, and believe, and do righteous deeds. It is these to whom no injustice shall be done in the least.
and will get their due rewards. They shall enter paradise. Gardens of eternity, which the most gracious God has promised to his servants, while these gardens are yet hidden from the sight. His promise is sure to come true. There they will hear no idle talk, but all that they hear will be only the greetings of peace. There they shall remain, provided with their sustenance, morning and evening, regularly and eternally. Such is the paradise which we give for a free gift and for an inheritance to those of our servants who guard against evil. And the angels will say to them, We, the angels, do not descend without the command of your Lord. To him belongs all that is before us and all that is behind us and all that is in between that. Your Lord is never forgetful and will not neglect you. He is the Lord of the heavens and the earth and all that is between the two. Worship him, therefore, and remain constant and steadfast in his worship. Do you not know that no one is his peer? A human being disbelieving in the day of resurrection says, What? Shall I be really raised to life again when I am dead? Does not such a human being remember that we created him before, when he was nothing at all? By your Lord, we will most certainly gather them together and their Satans as well. Then we shall bring them in every case, crouching on their knees to the environs of Jehenna. Then shall we pick out from every group the vilest of them in disobedience to the most gracious God. Behold, we surely know best those who are the most deserving of being cast and burnt therein. There is none among you, O those condemned to hell, but he shall reach there. This is a promise binding on your Lord, an absolute decree. And let us tell you another thing. We shall save those who guard against evil and are righteous. We shall leave only the wrongdoing people therein, fallen on their knees. When our clear messages are recited to them, the disbelievers say to those who believe, which of the two parties of us is better in respect of position and makes more impressive society? And how many a generation have we destroyed before them? who were better off in assets and better in outward show and splendor than these. Say, the most gracious God gives those who are steeped in error long respite. But when such people see that with which they are threatened, be it some worldly punishment or the hour of complete and final destruction, they shall realize who is worse placed and weaker in forces. To those who follow guidance, Allah gives increased guidance. And from the point of view of reward and ultimate return, you should bear in mind that the righteous deeds that last and endure are best in the sight of your Lord. Have you considered the case of one who denies our messages and says, I shall indeed be given great wealth and a number of children? Has he looked into and gained knowledge of the unseen, or has he taken a promise from the most gracious God? Indeed not. We shall certainly record what he goes on saying, and we shall continue prolonging for him the punishment to a great extent. And we shall remain after his leaving behind all that of which he talks so boastfully, and he shall come to us all alone and they have chosen other gods besides Allah, that they may be a source of strength and honor to them. Not at all. They are utterly mistaken. They, their gods, will deny one day they are worshiping them. They will turn hostile to them. Have you not considered that we do not keep away Satans from the disbelievers by force? These Satans incite them greatly in their acts of disobedience. So do not be impatient with regard to punishment against them. We are counting their time out, 
and we are also keeping full account of their deeds. Look forward to the day when the most gracious God shall gather those who guard against evil before him as honored delegates to bestow honors on them. And we shall drive those who cut off ties with Allah to Jehenna like a herd of thirsty animals. On that day, intercession shall be denied to all save him who holds a promise from the most gracious god some say the most gracious god has taken to himself a son who will be our intercessor say you have indeed uttered something exceedingly abominable and hideous the heavens are about to burst on account of that and the earth about to split asunder and the mountains to fall down in pieces because they have ascribed a son to the most gracious God. Whereas it does not behove the most gracious God that he should take to himself a son. Whoever is in the heavens and the earth shall come before the most gracious God in complete submission as a bondsman would. He indeed comprehends them by his infinite knowledge and having full power over them. He has numbered them all exactly. And they shall all come to him on the day of resurrection, all by themselves. Those who believe and do deeds of righteousness, the most gracious God will surely bring about in the hearts of the people fondest love for them. Prophet, we have made this Quran easy by revealing it in your own tongue that you may give glad tidings thereby to those who guard against evil and warn thereby a people stubbornly given to contention. Many a generation have we destroyed before them. Can you find so much as a single one of them, or can you even hear a whisper of them? Tao Ha, perfect man, be at rest. With the name of Allah, the Most Gracious, the Ever Merciful. Tawha, O perfect man, be at rest. We have not revealed this Quran to you that you should fail in your mission, but it is a reminder of things inherent in human nature to him who stands in awe to God and a revelation from him who created the earth and the high heavens. He is the most gracious God, who is firmly and flawlessly established on his throne of power. All that is in the heavens, and all that is on the earth, and all that lies between them, and all that lies deep under the moist subsoil, belongs to him. If you speak aloud, he does not stand in need of it. He knows the secret thought, as well as that which is yet deeper hidden. He is Allah. There is no other, cannot be, and will never be one worthy of worship but he. All of the most beautiful attributes belong to him. You must have surely received the narrative about Moses. When he saw a fire, he said to his companions, Stay here, for I perceive a fire creating feelings of love and affection. I hope I may bring you a firebrand from there. Rather, I feel that I would find some guidance at the fire. And when he came close to this fire, he was hailed. O oh, Moses, verily I alone am your Lord, so take off your shoes and stay and make your heart free from every care, for you are in the sacred valley of Tua. And I have chosen you, therefore listen to what is revealed to you. I and I alone am Allah, there cannot be, is no other, and will never be one worthy of worship but I. Therefore worship me alone, and observe prayer, so that you may keep me in mind. 
surely the hour of resurrection is bound to come i am about to unveil it so that every soul may be rewarded in accordance with its endeavor so do not allow the person who does not believe in it but pursues his own low desires turn you away from believing it lest you perish moses what is that you have in your right hand moses replied this is my staff i lean on it and bear down leaves for my sheep with it and it serves also my many other needs the lord said moses cast it down so he cast it down and lo it it was like a serpent running about the lord said get hold of it and do not fear we shall restore it to its former state and put your hand close under your armpit it shall come forth shining white without any disease providing you with another sign we have given you these signs so that we may show you some of our greater signs go to pharaoh he has indeed exceeded all limits moses said my lord if you have chosen me for this mission enlighten my mind and make my task easy for me and remove the impediments from my tongue so that they may understand my speech and grant me a helper from my family aaron my brother raise my strength through him and associate him in my task that we may glorify you over and over and spread your name far and wide surely you are indeed ever watchful over us the lord said moses you are granted what you have prayed for and we did confer on you a favor once before when we revealed to your mother that which was an important revelation saying place him moses in the chest and put it into the river the river will cast it on to the bank and the person who is my enemy as well as his will pick him up and i endowed you with my love with the result that you were brought up before my eyes and under my protection we bestowed another favor on you when your sister walked along the bank by the floating chest and said to those who picked up the chest from the bank of the river shall i guide you to one a nurse who will take charge of him in this way we restored you to your mother that she might be consoled and should not grieve and it came to pass that you killed a person but we delivered you from anguish then we purified you with various trials and you stayed for a number of years among the people of midian it was only then when you were properly groomed and came up to the standard set by us and i having made you perfect have chosen you for myself go you and your brother aaron with my messages and do not be remiss in remembering me go to pharaoh both of you for he has transgressed all limits but speak to him with a gentle speech maybe he pays heed and fears the consequences both moses and aaron said our lord we fear lest he pharaoh should hasten to do us some harm or exceed all limits in transgression against you the lord said have no fear i am with you both i hear prayers and i see your condition so go to him both of you and say we are the messengers of your lord so let the children of israel go with us and do not torture them we have come to you with a message from your lord 
peace will be upon him who follows the guidance. It has been revealed to us that the punishment comes upon him who cries lies to his messages and turns away. When they had delivered the message of God, Pharaoh said, Moses, who then is the Lord of you two, in whose kingdom you want to settle down? Moses said, Our Lord is he who gives every creation its proper form and character, and then guides them along the path of evolution in order to attain perfection and to do proper functions. Pharaoh said, what will be the fate of the former generations who did not believe in these things? Moses said, The knowledge of that is with my Lord, recorded in a book. My Lord neither errs nor forgets. It is he who made the earth a bed for you, and has threaded it with pathways for you. He sends down rain from the clouds. We bring forth by means of this water, pairs of vegetation of diverse kinds so that you may eat it and pasture your cattle upon it verily in all this there are signs for the people possessing sound reason we have created you from this universe and into this we will make you return and from this we will raise you to life a second time and we showed him pharaoh all sorts of our signs but even then he went on denying them and refused to believe he said moses have you come to us to turn us out of our country on the basis of your sorcery but we too shall certainly meet you with a matching sorcery make an appointment of time and place between us which appointment neither we nor you shall fail to keep. Let the meeting be at a place fair for us both. Moses said, The day of the festival will be the day of your appointment, and let the people be assembled when the sun is risen high. Pharaoh then withdrew and concerted his plan, then came at the appointed time and place for the contest. Moses said to them, Woe to you! Forge no lies in the name of Allah, or he shall destroy you utterly by some calamity, and surely he who forges a lie in the name of Allah has ever been unsuccessful. Upon this, they, Pharaoh and his courtiers, began arguing their affair among themselves, and kept their discourse secret. They said, Surely these two brothers, Moses and Aaron, are sorcerers who seek to drive you out of your country by dint of their sorcery and to do away with your ideal religious traditions. Therefore, you had better consolidate your resources than come forward and arrayed in a body, and indeed he alone who gains the upper hand and wins shall be successful today. The sorcerer said, Moses, either you present first what you have, or we shall be the first to present what we have. Moses said, Nay, you present first what you have. Accordingly, they were the first to present. No sooner did they present them, lo, their cords and their staves appeared to him by their trickstery, only as though they ran about. So Moses felt afraid in his mind, lest the people be misled by their glittering tricks. We said to him, Have no fear. Surely it is you who shall be the uppermost. Now cast down on the ground that staff which you have in your right hand. It will destroy all their artifices. For all they have wrought is nothing more than a device of a sorcerer, and the beguiler shall never succeed whichever way he may choose to beguile. Then it so happened that the sorcerers were instantly made to fall down prostrate. They said, We believe in the Lord of Aaron and Moses. Pharaoh said, 
dared you believe in him moses before i give you permission he moses must be your chief who has taught you sorcery i will i will certainly cut off your hands and feet on alternate sides by way of punishment because of your disobedience i will surely crucify you to death on the trunks of palm trees and you shall of a certainty come to know which of us can inflict a more severe and more abiding punishment they the sorcerers said we will certainly never prefer you to the clear proofs and signs that have come to us nor to him who originated us you may decide what you like to decide you can only decree concerning this present life and put an end to it we have surely believed in our lord that he may protect us against our faults and particularly forgive us the sorcery which you did constrain us to practice allah is the best and ever abiding verily he who comes to his lord in a state of sin he will surely be consigned to jahanna where he shall neither die nor live but those who come to him as believers having done deeds of righteousness there await them indeed exalted ranks gardens of eternity served with running streams there they will abide such is the reward of those who keep themselves ever pure and we directed moses by revelation take away my servants by night and take them along a dry path through the wide plain you will not be afraid of being overtaken nor will you have any cause of fear of being drowned now pharaoh pursued them with his armies but there covered them that tide of the sea which engulfed them completely indeed pharaoh caused his people to perish and did not lead them in the right way o children of israel we delivered you from your enemy and made a covenant with you on the right and blessed side of the mount sinai and we got manna and quail to be sent down to you and it was also said eat of the good and pure things we have provided you and do not exceed the limits in this respect or my displeasure shall descend upon you indeed lost are those on whom my displeasure descends but surely i am greatly protecting to him who turns to me in repentance and believes and does righteous deeds and then sticks to guidance when moses went to the mount god said moses what has made you depart from your people in such haste moses said they are close on my heels and i have hastened to you my lord that you might be pleased the lord said we have distinguished your people the good from the bad in your absence and the samiri has led them astray so moses returned to his people indignant and sorrowful reaching there he said my people did your lord not make you a gracious promise did then the promised time of forty nights and days seem too long to you rather you desired that displeasure from your lord should descend upon you and that is why you failed in your promise with me they said we have not wilfully failed to keep our promise with you but the thing is that we were laden with loads of the jewelry of the egyptian people and we threw them away into the fire that was what the samiri suggested then it came to pass that he samiri produced an effigy of a calf for the people to worship a mere body without a soul which emitted a lowing sound and then they the samiri and his followers said this is your god as well as that of moses so he samiri gave up the religion of moses could they not see that this calf made them no answer and could neither avoid harm to them nor do good to any
Aaron had indeed said to them before the return of Moses from the mount, My people, you have only been tried by this calf. Surely the most gracious God is your Lord. So follow me and carry out my biddings. They said, We will never give up to cleave to the worship of this calf until Moses returns to us. Moses turning to Aaron said, Aaron, when you saw them going astray, what prevented you from following me and punishing them? Dared you then disobey my biddings? Aaron said, O oh, son of my mother, do not hold me by my beard nor pull me by my head. If I was not strict to them, it was because I was afraid lest you should say, You have caused a disruption among the children of Israel and did not preserve my word. Moses now called upon Samiri to account for it, and said, What were you after by acting as you did, O Samiri? He said, I perceived that which they did not perceive, my perception and insight being stronger than theirs. I had adopted only some of the traditions and the teachings of the messenger, but that too I cast away. That is what my mind made fair seeming to me. Moses said, Be gone then, if it is so. It shall be your punishment to proclaim yourself an untouchable throughout your life. Not only that, but there awaits yet another threat of punishment of the hereafter for you, from which you will have no escape. Now look at the God to which you remain so ardently devoted as a worshiper. We will destroy it utterly and then we will scatter it away into the sea. Moses then addressing his people said, Your God is only Allah. There is no other, cannot be, and will never be one worthy of worship but he. He comprehends all things in his knowledge. In this way do we relate to you some of the important news of the days gone by, and we have indeed granted you from us a sublime reminder. Those who turn away from this shall bear a heavy burden on the day of resurrection. Abiding thereunder and grievous will the encumbrance be to them on the day of resurrection. The day when the trumpet shall be blown, and on that day we shall gather the sinners together, blue-eyed, the spiritually blind ones. They will talk one to another in a hushed voice, consulting together and planning in secret and saying, You have lived only for ten centuries. We know best what they will say, when the one of the most upright conduct among them will say, You have lived here only for a day. They ask you about the mountains. Say, My Lord will blow them up completely and scatter them as dust, and he will render them a desolate, and a level plain, where you will find no curve, no depression, and no elevation. On that day, they will follow the call of him, the holy prophet, in the teachings of whom is no crookedness. All voices shall be hushed up before the most gracious God, so you will hear nothing but a faint murmur. On that day, no intercession shall help anybody except that of him whom the most gracious God grants permission and with whose sayings and doings he is pleased. God knows all that is before them and all that is behind them. They cannot encompass him with their knowledge. And all persons shall humble themselves before the living, the self-subsisting, and all-sustaining God. And he who bears the burden of iniquity shall indeed fail in his objective. But he who does deeds of righteousness and is a believer will have no fear that he will be deprived of his reward or suffer any withholding of his dues. Just as we have revealed these verses, we have revealed the entire Quran in Arabic. We have explained in it in various ways our warnings against refusal and evil doings, so that the people may guard against evil and become righteous. Or, or rather, this Qur'an will bring forth for them a great 
glory and eminence. Highly exalted is therefore Allah, the true King, and make no haste to recite the Quran and anticipate the early fulfillment of its prophecies before its revelation is completed to you. But say in prayer, My Lord, increase me in knowledge. We had given a stern command to Adam before this, but he forgot, and we found no resolve on his part to disobey us. And recall the time when we said to the angels, Make obeisance to Adam and his sons. They all made obeisance, but Iblis did not. He refused to submit. At this we said, Adam, surely this fellow is an enemy to you and to your wife. Take care that he does not turn you both out of the garden of earthly bliss, lest you fall into trouble. It is provided for you that here you shall not feel hunger, nor shall you go naked, and that here you shall feel no thirst, nor will you be exposed to the sun. But Satan made an evil suggestion to him. He said, Adam, shall I direct you to the tree which leads to eternal life and a kingdom which never decays? So they, Adam and his wife, ate from that tree, so that their shortcomings became unveiled to them, and they began to cover themselves with the leaves of the garden. Adam did not observe the commandment of his Lord, so he became miserable. Then it came to pass that his Lord chose him for his benedictions, and turned to him with mercy and guided him to the right path. The Lord said, Go hence, both parties, one and all, you being enemies one to another. There shall most certainly come to you guidance from me. Bear in mind the law that he who follows my guidance shall not be lost, nor shall he be unhappy. But he who turns away from my remembrance, he shall surely lead a straitened life. And what is more, we shall raise him up blind on the day of resurrection. He will say, My Lord, what for have you raised me up in a state of blindness, while I possessed good sight before? He, the Lord, will say, That is how you acted. Our signs came to you, but you disregarded them. This day you will be disregarded in the like manner. That is how we recompense him who transgresses and does not believe in the messages of his Lord. Indeed, the punishment of the hereafter is extremely terrible and even more enduring. Does it afford them no guidance that we destroyed before them many a generation, in whose dwellings they now go about? Indeed, in this there are signs for those who possess understanding. But for a word of promise already made by your Lord, and the term already fixed for them, the inevitable would surely have befallen them by now. Hence, put up patiently with them what they say, and glorify your Lord with his praise before the rising of the sun and before its setting. And glorify him during the hours of the night and at the ends of the day in prayers, that you may attain real happiness and true bliss. Do not strain your eyes towards and hanker after the glamours of this world, which some groups of these disbelievers have been provided by us, that we may distinguish the good from the bad through that. The provisions of your Lord and his gifts are far better and more lasting than all this and bid your people to pray, and be constant and steadfast therein. We do not ask you to provide sustenance for us. It is we who provide sustenance for you. The good future lies in guarding against evil. And these opponents say, Why does he bring us no sign from his Lord? Has there not come to them a clear evidence about the advent of this prophet, 
from what it is contained in the former scriptures? Had we punished and destroyed them with a calamity before the advent of this prophet, they would have certainly said, Our Lord, why did you not send a messenger to us, so that we might have followed your commandments before we were humiliated and disgraced? Say, each one of us awaits the end. Therefore, wait you also. You will soon come to know who are the people of the right path and who followed right guidance and who do not.